Schön, dass Sie alle da sind. Thank you very much. Nice to have you here. You can see that today we have two keynote speakers. Today I would like to introduce to you Professor Dr. Peter Fröhlich. Please take the stage whilst I'm introducing you. And we might need a table. Professor Fröhlich is a lecturer for Embedded Systems and Information System Management at Deckendorf University. He is the dean for one faculty. At the same time, he is head of an institute, the Institute of Project IT, and he has the managing director of Project, Project M. And he is a real expert when it comes to automation technology. Thank you very much for your keynote and your introductory remarks in advance. And Mr. Hess already mentioned that this will play a major role in future. And I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Markman. A cordial welcome to all of you. Let me get started with the agenda. As Mr. Hess started, I would like to introduce yourselves to Industry 4.0. We are talking about topics like security, privacy, and safety, the connection of men and machines. What's going on here? Hello, hello. Can uh, the technicians do something? Hello. Dear guests of the Codesys Technology Day, you have been hacked. I have now full control over the screen and this building. If you want to regain control over your fate, you have to listen carefully to the following presentation. <laughs> Well, those of you who haven't read the book Blackout, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to cordially recommend that to you. A blackout realistically orchestrated. Of course, I don't want to show you that long an agenda. I want to talk about two points, get you all scared, and the second one as time allows. Mr. Wagner already introduced me. I work at Technological Institute. Dickendorf, and I built up a system that took care of service security after real-time internet. Uh, we have 10, 15 people that do their doctoral theses, lab engineers that are working in projects we've been doing anomaly recognition and cybersecurity projects. And together with these employees, we established a spin-off for consulting services in order to commercialize our services from the university. This blackout and hacking attack, as was simulated here, do happen in 2015. It happened regionally in Ukraine, not only in one hotel or conference center, but throughout a region, an attack to a transformation center, this is, has been well researched, and you find all the attack mechanisms and methods that you know. 
in a concerted attack, and they're all rolled into one, and you can read that. is a keystroke injection tool with a simple scripting language. That means computers see it as an ordinary keyboard, but hidden inside is a little robot that types your payloads at superhuman speeds. You can easily generate payloads to inject binaries into the command line, pop reverse shells, silently exfiltrate data, brute force pin codes. I mean, the possibilities are endless. The USB rubber ducky turns seconds of physical access into full penetration. Computers inherently trust keyboards. Computers trust the USB rubber ducky. An advertising video of the American company Hack5, which has not only that tool, but a whole armamentarium of hacking tools. Now, what it is all, is it all about? It's a USB stick that is recognized as a keyboard on every computer, but it has a flip side, a second phase. With a specific tool, you can upload special scripts uh, into that stick, and if you check under Robert Ducky on the internet, and you'll find a host of potential scripts amongst one, amongst them one that is a remote shell, which opens the firewall to the external world, allowing uh, communication to a CNC server, one of many applications that happen here. I went through the production hall of an uh, in automobile supplier, and I asked, oh, what is the hole in that fitting machine? That's where you link a service terminal, and that's where the entrance point of that system could be, so I could have compromised the machine. There are also other things here, a self-make kit, a, a adapter with an ink, ink embedded flash memory. So if you want to know what your boss or any other beloved people tends to type, just put that into the computer and there is a one gigabyte flash storage. So everything will be logged, passwords, user inputs, and websites. Everything is stored on that flash storage. If you don't have a PS2 connector, then you can buy it as a USB version. And if you have a bad back, you can have a wireless transmission tool as well. What, hap what exists as well is a Wi-Fi pineapple, the so-called rolled access point, with which you can hijack a, 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 a Wi-Fi network. It's uh, promoted like that, so you can put it in an assembly hall, you play assembly hall network, and all the devices will access the access point, so it's a man-in-the-middle attack. I don't know whether you've locked into the uh, guest network of the hotel, and here I can show you who is on my Wi-Fi pineapple, so here you can see who is logged in and where they they browse because we can see all the, the side accesses. They land on the man in the middle and it captures all the communication and the same attack front is open wherever you log on to a public wireless network. So be advised, if you do that, please build up a VPN with your company if that infrastructure exists. The worst attack vector is so-called social engineering. There are tools with which a PDF file or harmless documents can fit it with a Trojan that doesn't do any evil things, but just opens a firewall from the inside to the outside, and firewalls block our incoming traffic. They are like a data diet, a one-way road, so only external lines are admitted, and that's what these Trojans do. They link, they create a link or connection to the outside world. The firewall remembers that the outside partner can answer 
answer and reply, and you have a bidirectional communication, and the CNC servers can give orders like hijacking screens, reading out passwords, and so on and so forth, and you will not notice anything about it. Speaking of password cracking, here you see the infrastructure that can be used as a hardware. For example, such a server rack full of normal standard PC main boards, each of which is equipped with four gamer graphic cards with which you can play Doomsday 17, or you can also use the graphics kernels in order to parallelize computation. And with that, you can browse a huge surge area of passwords so that you can see what is possible. A nine digital character password security one would have been cracked in three years and ten months four months in 2012 and two months in 2016 so if the period is cut in half you can easily calculate how long a password you should have to make it uncrackable now, if we look at automation, we don't need that because you have all the posts for the password, the whole uh, administration and production people share. It's cell 05 for the sale, and then you don't need to crack any password, just read it off the post it. This comes from the Metasploit tool, and if you were uh, install it on your Windows, uh, computer, forget it, my virus, antivirus scan was very unhappy and went into permanent circling. Why? Because all the updates are database locked. So if a computer is not updated and there is an exploit and vulnerability, it is in the database. And here you can see what happens. So we go through the network. This is a firewall that is compromised here. You have a compromised computer, and you can have a GUI-controlled access to the network from computer to computer and peers through the network with your computer and a mouse. So if we talk about a production computer and you want to protect that, you have a several layer network with various firewalls in place, and this computer is not the one that is attacked. The target of attack is the old Windows XP computer that I have found with every one of you, everyone with production. I've seen that everywhere. There is an old Windows XP or 2000 computer, and I ask, what does it do? Well, we can't switch it off because there is a firmware programmer or an old laser control software is running on that, and that's not available on Windows 10. This device is unprotectable. It will be the first to be attacked. The tools do that automatically, and then I have a platform, a basis, from which to launch further attacks. Unlike in IT, where we have confidentiality as the top priority in automation, our top priority is availability, which means our services, our systems need to be up and running, if not production will grind to a halt. And if a computer or an SPS gets stuck, all the other parts will do the same because there is a lack of data or there is a security concept saying that all needs to be, everything needs to be online. So a tiny cause for a huge effect, that is DOS or denial of service. And here you see a tool with which to organize such a DOS. You might be asking yourself now, having seen various tools, why is that possible? Why is that available? Who gets them? Everyone can get them. This is a Linux distribution called Kali, for example, with all the penetration test tools. 
which you need to harden and in your systems it's all compiled into one it's regularly maintained and updated and here you can find many tools Metasploit for example and you will also find Trodan as the tool I assume that many know that who knows Trodan show of hand yeah quite some Trodan is Google of automation with Trodan you can find embedded devices automation systems that are network linked I don't have a keyboard a keyboard therefore I will ask Alexa to help me and demonstrate that to you Alexa please load the show that Trodan app Scotland skill has been loaded. Alexa, please look like look for Matt. Vaco seven fifty. Search initiated. I have one hundred and I found one hundred and eighty nine controls Vacro seven fifty that are online on the net. Alexa, please open the first link. I open the first link. Alexa, please go to security in the menu. If I go on security, there is a password query. Alexa, go to Google and look Look for Varo 750 password default. Okay. The username is admin and the password is VACO. Alexa, go back and answer the security request with the user admin and the password VACO. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that didn't work. Alexa, go back and do the same with the second link. I wish the Ecosys Technology Day participants a very eerie meeting. If I can be of any help to anyone, please feel free to contact me. Now let me sit back to my cloud and listen to what is being said in German living rooms. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I do that live, but it's a criminal offense to do that, and therefore I asked Alexa to commit the crime rather than me. I have more tools to show you. For example, this. Does anyone know that? An SD card, yes. An S7 killer. S7 is an important SPS by way of exception without codes, but that can't go on for much longer, can it? Why S7 killer? This is no hacking feature, but this is something promoted by Siemens with an S7-1200. If you supply an empty SD card, you can delete the whole control. There is a master reset, so all the passwords are reset to default. The actors are still linked, so if I can access the network, I can know the IP address of control, I can have it switch on everything, whatever that is, stamps, machines, whatever, and it hasn't been fully thought out, so maybe they did away with a switch or they thought about how to organize the re reset, but that is a complete and utter security risk, and that's what I want to achieve. I want to jolt you in the world of automation. We have less concrete and visible threats, but still we need to deal with security. That means we have to have a think about model systems from end to end. And in IT, we have an armament race, attack tools, automation of attack tools and defense. Most of us will use either Windows 10 or Linux and 
that you will also contribute, uh, participate in the Microsoft patch day, and you don't do that on your machine or in manufacturing. You don't know whether the process will still be running. The attacks here at the green curve don't need any knowledge to attack. And that is the problem behind it. Highly armed attack tools, hardly any knowledge necessary, and a completely unprotected world of automation that has failed to deal with that topic for two or three decades. Now we have Artis uh, 32 operation systems or other real-time OS, and we said nobody can hack that, nobody knows it, and then we used Linux or another distributed and popular system. Then we use TCP IP, and looking back, it doesn't take us by surprise that there are only three, two or three TCP IP stacks used in automation. They prevail, and they have the weaknesses we find in normal IT. That is to say, we have the same vulnerabilities embedded in our systems. We don't have any attack tools, and we haven't taken precautionary architectural or architect-related measures. An example that jolted the public because WannaCry attacked station information, it was not that the switch was hacked or the train, but the public said, saw that there are embedded systems, computers that are not seen as computers. Now, for some advertisement, in Degendorf we offer an accompanying master security course, and one user reported of a hacking incident in a bottle, bottling company, and they had a Trojan attack in their production. They had production losses and needed to clean the computers, and I would like to show you that attack because that is typical of the infrastructure we're all using. This is a key, a VPN, virtual private network box, which is an encrypted network connection. This goes through the internet and then passes the infrastructure of that bottling company to the bottling machine. Here you have two security boxes, and a maintenance technician can log on to a machine can do parameter or firmware updates. So good, so far so good. This remote maintenance can be, is, uh, will be known by many of you, and that replaces analog boxes and analog jackets and jacks and telephones. Now, here you have people like those from our institute, have become a bit more mature now, or the service technician. I don't want to step on anybody too only by these tools, but I spend a lot of time in hotels. I see them play Doomsday 17 or whatever you play with their business laptop, and they get a Trojan, the devil here. Nobody notices the laptop is Trojan. The next day, he locks on with the business, uh, the beverage company. He tunnels the infrastructure of and the internet, the whole IT infrastructure is tunneled, and nobody can look into it. It's an encrypted, well-protected channel also from being inspected by antivirus tools or firewalls, and this tunnel tube ends up at the machine, and the Trojan crawls through the tunnel saying, hello, I've made it. I didn't need to go the extra mile, but I reached my target directly, and now you're at the core, the heart of the company production. Of course, we have industry 4.0 means internal communication, so there is a rather unprotected distance between one machine and the next, and this one computer infects 
another machine. This was the infrastructure of the beverage bottling company, so this wanna cry spread from a remote gateway to several machines they needed to be decommissioned and the OS needed to be reinstalled and to reboot the system. Now, from an operator point of view, the problem is that they don't only have machines of one manufacturer, but each manufacturer has their own remote maintenance system. They're all good, but all different, and therefore he has a lot of channels and holes that bore into the internal network. That's the problem. And people that attended the court, uh, the, uh, the chorus from banks and so on said, are you crazy? How can you do that? Of course, the operator needs to administer the gateway. It needs to be put in a DMZ. We've been doing that for 20 years. We, yes, if we talk about IT, but we know if we talk about Automation. I'm very sorry that we're running out of time. I wanted to show you some solutions, but we will have more minutes, maybe. Of course, there is a quality circle that we can build up with automation. Plan, do, check, act, that means circle, a systematic procedure to become more secure. And I would like to talk about some elements briefly. The first is a risk analysis. Mr. Schirmer will talk about a threat analysis that has already made it to CODESYS. I would like to show you something similar. Risk analysis is a process of various steps. First of all, we identify the use cases, updates of firmware, normal machine operations, and all the uh, the normal steps. Then security assets are identified. It has been tried and tested in our customer-based projects to look at client tasks as assets, and then we look at attacks, threats, men in the middle, uh, attacks by this device or another device, eavesdropping of, capturing of, or interruption of a connection, then they, you look at the potential damage. The machine doesn't run is broken, I can get an operator, I need to have a service technician power up the machine, the safety circle has been compromised, so there are various levels of damage that you can evaluate. That is what you sum up in a threat matrix, so that where you allocate a threat to a damage, and you generate a risk report with which you say, what are the concrete risks at my machine? That's what a threat editor looks like. This is the Microsoft threat modeling tool, and Mr. Schirmer is going to show a project, um, a tool that is embedded or integrated in CodeSys already. A database reads out or is read out for various threats. What you need to do is assess them. What is the likelihood of occurrence and how easy are they to detect? Because it does make a difference if you have a damage and just continue producing cars with a safety gap for three months or if you notice something's wrong immediately. A market get back is always a problem. So likelihood of detection is one point. And to the right here, you can see the damage, the potential damage that are ticked and allocated to the individual threats. And if you do that, you have an FMEA and you can extrapolate the likelihoods and then you get a risk list for a machine that you can rank by a top score saying, let's look at the top five. Oh, there were things where we were fast asleep and we only need to 
uh, changed a tiny little bit, low-hanging fruit, and we know that uh, it can be changed easily, and that's what we're going to do. We know that from safety, we need to do that in automation as well. Only the machine manufacturer can do that because only he and the operator know the damage. The operator, the, the control manager can only assess the, di the threat but not show the damage. So this has to be done from the user side. And this leads to requirements made of control. And then the manufacturer says, my control is harmed and fulfills some requirements. We have the IEC 62443 standard. Most of you will be familiar with it. And here it was el elaborated by the ISA 99 task force in uh, Northern America. In North America, in an automation organization, so we don't have a not invented here problem, but a worldwide accepted standard, and it's adopted worldwide. We have four levels. The top level shows the standard and the general principles. The second level, the green one, deals with operation. What can the operator do? A lot of uh, non-technology is involved. How do I deal with service technicians bringing their own laptop? May they link it up? Do they get a laptop from me? Level three deals with multi-component systems. And uh, level four deals with the component manufacturer. For example, the SPS manufacturer. Here you have two parts. The right-hand part, 4.2, deals with the product. The part, 4.1, deals with development processes. And one requirement of that standard is building up a network architecture that allows for some segmentation. Here you don't say Industry 4.0. Every steel rod may have phone calls with one another, or wherever they are, but we have clear competences and responsibility limits for a machine, a process, or a cell. And here I have various communication re, uh, relationships. I describe them, adding what ports and communication mechanisms they use. That is called a conduit. And these links can be implemented with a firewall. The firewall is a bit problematic in automation because it interrupts, and that's what we don't want to do. Because then all I need to do is send something to the firewall that it sees as evil, and then I can make the firewall a bit my attack. And then you have an interruption of the process and denial of service. So I think intrusion detection and anom anomaly detection is important. We do a lot of research here. AI needs to notice there is something wrong, and that works very well with automation. Because we have very static communication relations, we don't always change the tools, the protocols. We can find that whether everything is normal or not. Here is an intrusion detection system on a VAGO, and some VARO people will be in the room. I only picked VARO because it has a nice surface, um, surface and it can be used easily. It's not a VARO-specific topic, or it's not true to say that VARO can be hacked more easily than others, but it is just punishable negligence to put controls to the internet. There are people with search plans that are glad to have online connections, but don't think about how to protect it. So here is the pro prototype that we implemented together with CodeSys that listens to the network traffic and wants something Extraordinary is coming, it raises its hand and say, hey, stop, there's something wrong. And there can be also a manual reduction, uh, but, uh, manual intervention, but doesn't necessarily mean machine shutdown. Of course, it makes sense to check whether the measures work. For this, a security audit is required. That is a multi-stage 
a process, the first concept audit followed by a component audit with fuzzing and all the tools that I've shown you checking whether the component or control is stable and whether interface, a network interfaces can be used to put, uh, get it down or make it crash. And most will, because there will be a TCP IP stack overflow. And if I do DDOA attacks, then the uh, program or the, the component will forget that it has to control an SPS system. Then we do a system audit looking at the whole network. And of course, you need to document everything. This is an example. And of course, you can have a certification of conformity, and it makes sense to look at the development process, saying we want to develop security, security by design, and now you need to think about how to get security in this ICE 62443 part for one is very well suited for that and encodes this. The standard has been looked into and measures have been taken into consideration so as to make matters more secure. Everything need to, needs to be translated into a continuous process, and there is a major difference when it comes to safety. With safety, I do risk assessment, I make it redundant, then there is a minimal risk residual risk, and I can live with that, and then I can, put, can put, file it in my cabinet saying, this is my assessment. In security, I can do the threat assessment one, and it can be scrapped tomorrow if someone feels uh, finds a vulnerability and publishes an exploit. A system that was safe yesterday can easily be hacked tomorrow. That's why uh, Microsoft provides patches, and why that's why Intel has found the second process architecture bug because people are looking for it. You need to be prepared as manufacturers. You need to be in a position to react fast, not only program the update, but roll it out and make it available to your customer. So we need continuous maintenance and responsibility along the entire value creation chain. So 3S, OS manufacturer, an SPS manufacturer, a machine engine, mechanical engineer, and the operator. And they all need to be in a daisy chain of service and maintenance. There are new chances, new business models. We are in our infancy here, and I would like to invite you think about what it means to you and your role in the value chain. Finally, because I mentioned passwords, I would like to give you one takeaway tip. Many use KeePass 2 or similar tool. This is open source. If I allocate a password, I don't do that by thinking about it like a security one, but I take a random password. KeePass will pick that, and it needs three components, a database with the password entries on my PC, a key file that I have on my USB stick or SD card and a master password with which I can log on to each website. So I have individual passwords for all my accesses and if you don't do it now, do that from tomorrow onwards. Do something for your password access and the credentials. Be bold and take the next, next step. The path to security is not insecure. We know the standards and processes. It's clearly set. You have to take the first step. And I'm looking forward to fr uh, profitable conversations in the break. Thank you very much. Thanks, Herr Fehrhunten.